Remember this? Film. Actual film. <laughs> Right. Oh, you couldn't just change ISO with every shot when you were dealing with film. No siree. It was the biggest pain in the butt. You had to actually take the film out and put another roll in just to change ISO. You wouldn't wind it all the way, but there'd be a problem and then I never want to go back to those days. I love being able to change ISO between shots. And you know what I love even more? Auto ISO. Yes, give it to me. Yes, please. Auto ISO. Roll intro. Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech Today I'd like to focus on auto ISO and how it works on Fujifilm cameras, specifically the X-T2, X-T3, and X-T4. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say X-T4, I figured <laughs> it just felt so good. And anyway, let's dig into auto ISO. First thing you need to do is make sure that your camera is set up to best use auto ISO. So the first thing you need to do is put the ISO dial on A, and I like to lock it. The next thing you wanna do is go into your menu, into button dial setting, and go down to where it says ISO dial setting A auto and make sure that that is set to auto. That really trips up a lot of people. So make sure it's set to auto if you wanna use auto ISO here. Now that you have your camera set to do auto ISO, we need to go into the three auto ISO presets. The way you get there is you go into menu, camera, ISO auto setting and you will see the three presets right here. One little gotcha to keep in mind. If you happen to have the camera in video mode, that's a problem because if you go into the ISO auto settings, they will be grayed out. You see that? You see how it's grayed out? But if you take this and put it back into any other setting, you'll see it is now available. These are three presets that you can customize and each one has three parameters that you can adjust. Default sensitivity, max sensitivity, and minimum shutter speed. This should really be called minimum ISO. And it goes all the way up to 12,800. Keep in mind that it will not and does not include the extended ISO values of L and H. Can't use those, all right? So the auto ISO feature only allows you a choice of one of the native ISO ranges on the camera. Basically the numbers you see on the dial here that are not H and L. On the X-T3, I recommend setting this default to 160. If you have an X-T2 camera, set it to 200. The next one is max sensitivity, and here you are telling the camera the highest ISO you want to use. And you need to choose wisely here because no matter what other settings you have on this camera, if you set a value here and you go out and you start shooting, your camera will never go beyond that. So a good starting place for this that I like to use is ISO. 3200. And finally, we have minimum shutter speed. And here you have two choices. First, you could set a firm value, such as one over 1 25th of a second. And if you do that, you're telling the camera, hey, don't shoot at a slower shutter speed than the value I set here. Now, in addition to these firm set values, it also gives you the option called auto. This causes the camera to automatically set the minimum shutter speed according to whatever focal length lens you have on the camera, right? So it'll depend on the type of lens you have. What it does is it assigns the shutter speed based roughly, the keyword is roughly, on one over the focal length of the lens. Let's test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and set max sensitivity all the way up to 12800. Got that, I've got it in auto. I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera in auto mode. Boom, okay, now I'm kind of looking around here and as I sort of drop my light here, shutter speed is 34. For this 23 millimeter lens, and I had it on auto, right? it's choosing a minimum shutter speed of one over 34. There's some weirdness that goes on with these calculations because it's not exactly one over the focal length of the lens. Why would you wanna use auto to begin with, okay? Well, let's say you're using the 55 to 200 zoom, 
okay? And to avoid handheld camera shake blur, you need to use a different minimum shutter speed depending upon where you have this lens zoomed in, right? So if you have it at 55 millimeters, then you would have one set of minimum shutter speed to avoid camera shake when you're holding the camera. But if you zoom all the way up to 200, you're going to need a faster shutter speed because you are now at a higher focal range, right? So it depends, and that's why auto was created. It reads the lens automatically and then adjusts the minimum shutter speed of the camera based on whatever the current focal length is that you happen to be zoomed in on. That's the, in, in theory, that's what it is. But there's some screwball things going on with auto minimum shutter speed that I'm not that thrilled with. First off, there's no way to tell the camera the specific multiplier to use for the calculations. And second, what does approximately mean? I mean, it's not very clear, so who knows? Third, and most problematic, at least for me, is that the camera ignores whether or not the lens has image stabilization built into it. That's a big deal. So if you have a lens that has OIS, let's say you got your little switch on, on OIS, it will allow you to shoot handheld at much slower shutter speeds than non-OIS lenses. But the auto minimum shutter speed seems to really not take this into account. And you know, that's a problem, at least for me. So with these variables and how they work together, let's talk about the elephant in the room, okay? What happens when you don't have enough light? How does auto ISO handle this and what does it do to your shutter speed? First, let's say that you have the camera set to auto everything. So got it set to auto everything. If there's not enough light, the camera will first try to compensate for this by slowing down your shutter speed and opening up your aperture to let in more light. And it will do this keeping the lowest ISO, that's the default sensitivity that you've set in the preset. And if there's still not enough light to properly expose the image, it will then start raising the ISO in your camera until it reaches your ISO max setting. And once it hits that, it will never, and this is the key you need to know, once it hits that, it will never go beyond that. And since your lens is now as wide open as it possibly can be, your camera then begins to lower your shutter speed even beyond the original minimum that you set. This is the biggest gotcha with auto ISO on the Fujifilm camera because highest ISO really is highest ISO and the camera will never go beyond that, ever. But minimum shutter speed is more of a suggestion, right? It's not a rule. And the camera will and does break out of that and will lower your shutter speed, which can result in a blurry photo. Same thing if you have the camera on aperture priority. And let, let me show you with a real life example here and now. I'm gonna choose default sensitivity of 160, max sensitivity, I don't want the ISO to go higher than 800, and my minimum shutter speed is 1 30th of a second. I am gonna open up the lens all the way to two in aperture priority right here. I've got this set on auto, and I've got this set on auto. Now, if I'm trying to take a picture with it, Look at how my shutter speed, if it doesn't get enough light, my shutter speed drops. You see that? It drops, look at that. So my ISO is 800, that was the maximum ISO I set. It will not go beyond 800 and it will happily lower my shutter speed down to 1 15th, resulting in a blurry shot, okay? So, you know, how can you best use auto ISO and what do I recommend that you do? Easy, simple, simple. You need to put the camera in what I call Dwati mode. Don't worry about the ISO mode, all right? And here's, <laughs> Dwati mode is great for shooting kids, 
fast moving action where you're, you know, you're using, say you're using a 90 millimeter lens and you just want that awesome control because I like to have control over both aperture and shutter speed, but not always have to be fiddling with these dials constantly. So here's how you do that. I go into my ISO auto setting. I set the default sensitivity to the lowest one on the camera. So on the X-T3, that's 160. On the X-T2, that would be 200. Next, I set the max sensitivity all the way up to 12, 800. Again, I'd rather have a grainy shot than a blurry one. Then I set my minimum shutter speed. It really doesn't matter what you set here because we're going to take control over the shutter speed. So I'm just going to go ahead and just, just to set it, I'm going to put it at 1 60th of a second. Now here, what I do is I keep this dial in auto. Okay, so I'm going to take control over this dial right here and I'm going to say, hey camera, do not go below over 1 60th of a second, okay? Then on my aperture, I'm going to take control of that because I want some beautiful bouquet in the background and I'm going to say, all right, I want it at, you know, F2. So I'm controlling the aperture, I'm controlling the shutter speed, and I have this dial in auto ISO. Now I can go out and I can take pictures to my heart's content. And as you can see, look how it's adjusting the ISO. If I aim it at something bright, right? 160, 160. But if I aim it at something, you know, darker, darker, it drops it down to 200 ISO. So it's just auto adjusting the ISO. And that is a really wonderful technique when you want a minimum of hassle, you want to have some semblance of control over aperture and shutter speed, and you're shooting raw. Because what's great is you can bring those raw files in and you know, there is the whole thing about ISO invariance, which I will talk about in a future video. Okay, here are some ways that I would like to see auto ISO improved all of which I think could be done with firmware updates. Okay, Fuji, listening. First off, if I'm in program or aperture priority mode, I want to be able to specify that under no circumstances do you ever go below the minimum shutter speed. I'd rather have, you know, more noise at a higher ISO than a blurry shot, okay? You know, some kind of firm minimum shutter speed specification in the auto ISO settings. I'd like to be able to customize the ratio, my own ratio, instead of using the default one over focal length of the lens that's in here. Basically, I I want to choose the number and then the camera would use that number as the multiplier. Three, could we please have an ability to rename auto one, auto two, and auto three to something a little more friendly like, you know, indoor church or outdoor soccer practice. That would be helpful. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it the like and subscribe and I will see you again real soon. Take care. Exactly how are these calculations made? Uh -oh. Hey, is there any way the dog could not be going berserk? No, it was just UPS. Right. Okay, are they gone now? <laughs> okay, thanks. Sorry. It's all right. <sighs>